Hi guys, how are you? I'm Lissy from Fangirlish and it's great to be here. Hi nice Lissy, how are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. You guys are in Lord of the Rings, so that's amazing. Right? It's how lucky insane. did we get? Yeah. We got very lucky. Uh, were you fans of like, do you come into this with knowledge of what you were stepping into? Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a little older, so I'm closer to the original publication date. Not that close, <laughs> but, you know, so so from when I was a kid, it was the book. So, that you know, that was when my imagination was fire, particularly Hobbit, because that's the first one you read when you're younger. And then rereading that to my uh, uh, my son called Maxim, who's also called Maxim Fiction. What are the chances? <laughs> it's like the universe working its magic. Um, so, yeah, super, super excited that 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 I would become part of this extraordinary world that Tolkien created a real a real moment of uh, what me this gets to happen to me it was a lovely feeling mm. you yeah. weight of the world you know the expectation on the show it's overwhelming but I feel like we put a lot of love and care into this job JD and Patrick are tremendous um, fans and, and 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 almost scholarly uh, a love for Tolkien and I think that together we've created a, a pretty impressive and um, representation of, of Tolkien's universe. It, it, you're also stepping into the role of characters that are more well known than some of the other people like th these are names that even if you haven't seen so much of the characters when you say the name like it's Sildur oh look it's like it everyone knows who these characters are it, it was that I mean, I guess as an actor, you put the weight on yourself, but like, as you started stepping into the role, was it a way like you made your the role your own? It's not a character we really know as much as a character we've heard of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the good news for us, right? You know, that that you that there are these signposts that Tolkien has put. The right? tent poles. Tent poles, yeah. Signposts. To, everything that sticks in the ground, basically, yeah. is what he's talking about. Uh, that lead to these certain events. So, so you get this great privilege of 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 these 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 law characters there, and they're law to the characters in the third age. But here in the second age is where they begin, is where we can really see them. And there's this fantastic opportunity to open them up. And as you know, Tolkien said he would leave his his legendary to to other minds and hands to get hold of. And and we feel in very safe hands with JD and Patrick, who have this encyclopedic knowledge, love of Tolkien. Uh, with the fanboy passion behind it, but with this with this great skill, so yeah, it's a great a great privilege, responsibility, and excitement to play these roles and bring them to life. That's and to what. and to see where they start as well, mm. like that aspect of a new city that's never been explored before, never been seen before by anyone. Mm. For us to create that world, create that culture, um, is a real privilege and a real honor, and I feel very grateful to be part of it yeah. in that respect. Also, it's a brand new, it's a brand new world that very few people would have seen or even read about. They're, but, they're definitely but heard about. Like, heard obviously, about. Obviously, Aragorn comes from this yeah. island. Yeah, I'm the 38th, yeah. 38th grand, great grandfather. He's the 37th great grandfather. The couple of grandfathers you're talking to here. So give us some respect. Yeah. Please. And then a lot of sword you... fighting between these two grandfathers. <laughs> a lot of armor. Are you gonna one day you're gonna run into Viggo Mortensen and be like, hey. Right. Respect, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you that. got it exactly we right. We need to do that. Respect. <laughs> See, Makes now sense. I gave you the idea. <laughs> um, what about the dynamics between the, your characters? What can you tease about that? Um, I think there is there's a certain there's a certain level of conflict, which is which which is uh, symbolic of the conflict that's always go also going on in Numenor. There's a bit of a divide, a potential schism in society between the Elvish and the old ways, and the new, more nationalistic Numenorean ways. To to a certain extent, it's a battle between head and heart. There's something of the passion that Isildur. Uh, uh, shows and represents which reminds Elendil of how he was as a younger man but also as the old man knowing that there are many 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 mistakes that you can make with that sort of passion uh, next to you so uh, you can't put a wise head on young shoulders unfortunately and that's being played out in this relationship how does it feel for unless, your unless <laughs> uh, no it's a classic tale of father and son uh, it's an age old tale uh, that that every family experiences um so it's it's it, in that way a lot of people can relate to this dynamic, um, 
And I mean, not every family, because if you've got two daughters, they don't have a father well, and son. Well, uh, well understandably, just it's just yeah. father and son. Uh, <laughs> but but they are very similar, and I think in a way, in that way, they do butt heads. And again, it's it's that act of rebellion of wanting to leave to 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 not do the same thing that my father's doing, whilst also having a deep admiration and love, and, and almost um, need for respect from his father that mm-hmm. he he doesn't quite get because of his rebellious streak or lack of uh, obedience well i mean the question that i suppose you is very hard to answer is isildur is the one who gets the ring and doesn't throw it in but had elendil succeeded in killing sauron instead of being killed in the act of killing sauron and got the ring would he have thrown the ring in if he'd had the opportunity and this is the question that we all ask ourselves individually and none of us would know until the moment that we're holding that ring. We all have the capacity for evil. Mm. We also all have the capacity for good. Right. Are, are you playing it back? Like, are you thinking of that moment with Isildur and the ring and you're playing it back and seeing how he got there? Or are you just separate enough that you're not thinking of that as you're playing him? I actually would rather like, as a, I, I, I want to leave that up to you as a viewer to watch the choices that, that I've made for Isildur to see... Um, I want I want to create a fully well-rounded character that almost um, I want you to understand the choices that he's making and to see that maybe this is not necessarily uh, a mistake, but more an act of wanting to do good or something that something that 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 can be redeemed for all the th- all the things that he's lost in the process. It's interesting, isn't it? Because the assumption in that case is always that Isildur is is inherently bad because he does that. But Frodo, we all think of as inherently good. But had Gollum not been there to bite his finger off, he might well have kept the ring himself as well. And it's a question not of do you tell the story of Isildur so that it turns out that he's the bad guy? Or do you just tell the story of a normal human being? Which is what I feel is, is are the themes of Tolkien's stories are... Human. Uh, this is what it's like yeah. to be human and all our fallibility and all our difficulty and, and with all our flaws. Yeah, I, I love that. And thank you so much, guys. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope people enjoy it. Bye. Thank you.